Faith and Victory Church in our Wednesday night midweek Bible study. So glad to have you with us. We're continuing on our series on your words, uh, your future. And so we just want to make sure that you're, uh, you know, your words, your tongue, your future. And we're going to continue our teaching. Last week we were uh, covering one of the points on how to change circumstances and things. And one of our points was, uh, last week's point was, you have to walk in love. You have to walk in love. If you're going to be able to use your faith and see things work, you're going to have to walk in love. All right? So let's join us tonight. Father, we thank you for the Word of God. We thank you for the Holy Ghost. We thank you for the teacher of the church. That uh, even where people are sitting now in, in this place or at home or around the world, we thank you, Father God, that the same Spirit that raised Christ up from the dead it, that dwells in them will be their teacher will be their God, will take the things that we say by the Spirit of God and pierce into their heart and bring revelation and bring understanding and cause them to grow in God so that they're effective in their work for the kingdom of God in the earth in Jesus' name. And everybody agree with that by saying, Amen. Hallelujah. So last week, we, we, like we said, we had covered uh, previously um, saying the right things and how we live, living, right, living correctly, putting the word first, seeking the kingdom of God, seeking first the kingdom of God, and his righteousness and all these things be added unto you. Last week, we, uh, we're ministering on living in love or living by love and, um, and to forgive. You know, if you don't forgive, you can't, you can't get stuff working for you, all right? So this week, we're going to talk about this. Decide to live by faith. We have to make a conscientious decision that we're going to live by faith. That means you're going to have to, what? Cast down imaginations that exalt themselves against the knowledge of God bringing into captivity every thought, amen? Every thought that wants to exalt itself against the things of God, we've got to bring it into captivity. And that's it's an exercise. It's something we have to purposefully do. Or you won't do it, okay? Uh, we all know this. Everybody in this room knows this. If you, if you will go over here every day, uh, right across the hall here to the weight room, you know, and you lift weights every day, you'll, you'll build muscle mass and you'll get in shape. Now, we all know that. You can go out there and sit in the chair and look at all those weight machines and the free weights sitting in there and go, well, man, if I, was, if I use this, I would get in shape. And sitting out there looking at it, watching it, going home and thinking about it won't do you a bit of good. You won't build muscle mass thinking about the fact that if you lifted those weights, you'd get in shape. It doesn't work that way. Right? You've got to go in there and work out. You've got to exercise. You've got to take what you know to do and do it, all right? Same thing with faith. We can hear messages on faith, you know. Um, be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. You can't say, I mean, if I live by faith, if I spoke the word, if I believed God, I could have this and I could do that and I could achieve this, da 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 And that's think about it. Talk about it. Not talking it, but talking about it. Won't do you any good. You're not going to move mountains thinking about, man, if I spoke to that mountain, it would move. Does it work that way? Okay? And um, I think, uh, well, no, that's, that's, that's last week. I was about to read the last week's verse. I'm sorry. Um, Romans 1.17 says, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Now, the word just, justified, um, convey the same meaning as made righteous, being righteous or made righteous, okay? Now, if you've been justified, you've been made righteous. If you're just, you're righteous. If you're righteous, you're just, okay? Um, and so we have to understand that the just shall live by faith. Thank God we can live by faith, amen? Now, the beautiful thing is God says the just shall live by faith, all right? But he doesn't leave you without help are you here i mean he you know um habakkuk 2 4 says and the just shall live by his faith and then there's two other places we get that same phrase in the bible um that the just shall live by faith and um because we live by faith because we're supposed to live by faith that's how we have to live so you got to make a decision that's how you're going to live you can't live by the flesh. You can't live by your, your, your hope so, maybe so. You can't live by the natural man. You can't live by the way it was or, you know, the way it could have been. Or the, you can't go around singing the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. All right? You're going to have to say, I, I, I'm, I choose. 
The just shall live by faith. As being righteous people, we're to live by faith. And we can. Then a beautiful thing is, I was going to say, say this earlier, I didn't get to it, that God says you'll live by faith. But he doesn't leave it there. Because the Word of God also says he's dealt to every man the measure of faith. And then he tells us in Romans 10, 10, 17, that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. And so faith comes to us. He deals us the measure of faith. We can grow that faith. The Bible calls faith exceedingly growing faith. How do you grow it? The same way you go in that gym, work your muscles. All right? You don't get more muscles. You get more muscle tissue. You'll build muscle tissue. You'll tear it down. It'll grow a bit more muscle. Okay? So when you, when you lift weights, how many of you have ever done some kind of exercise, you're sore? What you've done, you've actually torn down the muscle tissue. And then it grows back, and it grows back harder and stronger. Okay? So if you go in the weight room and do like I did one time, like an idiot, and overdo it trying to get started again, you tear it down too much. And then for four days, you can't lift your arms up to wash your hair. And you're leaning your head over and trying to push your hand up to, to wash your head because you just tore it all to pieces. I mean... Uh, a guy named Mark Crum. Now, Mark was in our church you know, a number of years ago, and me and him went over to the Guilford College Y to, we were going to start lifting weights. Went in there, I hadn't lifted in a number of years at that point, and was benching 225, you know, <clears throat> first day. Go, man, I ain't lost it, you know? I mean, it'd be this long, and I, I'm still, I can still hop in here and do 225, did the, you know, doing 10 reps, this kind of stuff. Next day, I had to roll out of bed, just flop in the floor. And kind of use my head on the edge of the bed to get my legs up under me and kind of get my arms and kind of, you know, get. Well, he was a carpenter. He didn't have nail guns. He used a hammer back then, you know. He couldn't work for three days because he couldn't get his arm up to swing the hammer with nails. He was tore down so bad, okay? Um, but but we, we, we learned a lesson. Start slow, finish strong. <laughs> Instead of starting fast, not finishing at all. Yeah, I mean, you know, I've done my legs before, gone in, done my legs, and, you know, you get ready to come down the steps, and you can't walk down the steps. you got to turn around and, and hold on to the handrail and come down backwards because you can't put the pressure on the front of your thighs to uh, carry your weight. So you're going down backwards, you know. It's awkward. You're just glad nobody's watching. Okay, well, but that's tearing that muscle down, and then it grows back, and it grows back stronger. Okay, now, typically, you should do it slower. Okay, and you get better results when you do it slower because, and then, then when you get to a certain point, you can move up, and you can do more, and you recover quicker. But when you're, you haven't done something in a long time, and that's the same thing with faith. If you may have been walking by faith at one time and gotten to a certain point, and then you hop back in there, and you think you're going to run up there with, you know, uh, Cadillac faith, and you're, you're down to VW. I'm talking about the matchbox ones, not the real ones. Okay, you, I mean, you, you know, and you're out there trying to, you know, oh, I used to be able to believe God for this. Yeah, but you're going to you're gonna have to rework those muscles and get them back in shape. Um, I remember Dad Hagen back in um, the early 90s, around 1990, 91, he was going to start having ministers' conferences. And, um, <clears throat> and so he was, he was starting to hold ministers' conferences, and I went to his first one. The very first one he did when he started having it was down in Charlotte at Phil Jackson's church. Uh, Philip and Charles Jackson's church down there in Charlotte. And, uh, but he made this statement because he, he announced he was going to start doing it at Winter Bible Seminar, and then later, later he did it. Um, but he said, he said it's going to take us several services because we hadn't done it this way in a while. It's going to take several of these meetings to get back into the flow. Okay, I'm sorry, not ministers' conference. This is when he's starting to do the Holy Ghost meetings. I'm sorry. I got, I got two. They, they happen within a certain number of years if each other was close after he did the minister's conference and he started doing holy ghost meetings and that's what that's what he said this he said at winter bible seminar one year uh talking about the, the holy ghost meetings he said we're gonna it's gonna take us a few meetings to get back to where we were to get back into that flow you're just not gonna boom step right back into it you just don't step back into it like that you kind of you start stepping into it and adjusting and, and getting more sen getting sensitive again and people becoming more uh, aware spiritually, et cetera, and so forth, okay? Just, some of that stuff just takes time. Now, the segue into Sunday morning, it's going to take some time of us pursuing some things to get back into a flow as a church. And it's not on point with the message tonight, but still. 
it kind of fit, I wanted to say it. All right? You know, we can't have a service where I say one thing, and next, next service, everybody's, whoo, we got it. Wow. Okay? We're going to have to start, extra, we're, we're talking about exercise in our faith, remember? And I said that God's going to bring the finances through the church people. He's not going to circumvent you to bring the money in. Okay? We, we always say he could, but he, that's not how he works. Okay? When they got ready to build the temple, he didn't, he did not just, you know, go boom, and they opened up a gold mine. And they're all, it was all there. Just started, the priest just went and picked it up and paid for everything. He, talked to, he spoke to the people, and they started bringing and They started bringing it. The people started bringing it. Okay? It was there. It was available. They had to start bringing it. And so we're going to have to exercise our faith. The money in the, and the things we need as a church to go where we're supposed to go is there. It's already there. We just got to get our faith out there individually and corporately. See, we're praying corporately about it, but we individually have to start exercising our faith. Because it's really the individual's bringing, remember, as every joint supplieth. When you go to Ephesians, I'm, 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 I'm kind of semi on task with the, what I'm teaching on tonight. Okay? We're living by faith. But you know, Ephesians says that, you know, that the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth. Okay? So the body functions as each joint supplieth. Now let's take that over here to what we're talking about. This body functions as each joint fitly compacted together and fitly joined together as you supply. Which means you're going to be believing God. You're going to be exercising your faith. You're going to be speaking things over your personal life so that you can fitly join together and supply. Now we're not saying sell your house, go bankrupt, and give it all to the church. That's not what we're saying. We're talking about you exercising your faith. You believe in God. You stepping up there and, and, and listening to God and asking God what to do and asking God how to get it done. You hearing from heaven and following after the Spirit of God. And then, then obeying Him as it takes place. As the finances come, you bring, you bring that portion of God to, to the church. Okay? And so that way, you are part of the equation. Let me, let me maybe do it this way. Y'all probably figure out what this is when I finish drawing it. Okay? Thank you, Jeff. It's a lamb. <laughs> Technicality, people. All right. This is the church. This is God. God doesn't bypass this to make that work. This is the people. When you plug this in, this flows here. Is that terrible graphic? Are you, about, are you making fun of my graphic? <laughs> this is the people. Uh, this is the steeple. Open it up and there's all the people. <laughs> Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, God has a supply. What? The electricity's here. I mean, right over there, there's an outlet. The electricity's there, but it's not jumping across the room to a piece of electric equipment to make it run. Yeah, thank goodness, right. We have the equipment. The church is what we're trying to furnish with what it needs 
so we can do the work of God. So we can carry the light to the world. Ooh, that wasn't that <laughs> good illustration? <laughs> Just happened into that one. <laughs> All right? But the people is the supply line from God to the, that light. Okay? And so what, what do we do? We start believing God to use us so that we plug in to God and that flow comes. See, once you plug in, the flow of electricity can now come here. Okay? If it's not plugged in, it doesn't flow there. And if that were to jump from here over to there, like Jess said, you know, thank God it's, it doesn't, you're talking about an arc of uncontrolled electricity. We don't want uncontrolled electricity. When it, God want, does things decently in order. He does it in control. He does it so it's a blessing. That same arc, that same power, uncontrolled, could burn your house down. Okay? So he's not going to circumvent the way he does things. Probably somebody's watching going, it's not connected. There we go. It didn't. I got touching that because inside the little thing. It, and, and, uh, oh, wait a second. Here we go. Everybody's a critic. An artistic critic. Just trying to make a point. <laughs> I don't have yellow. I don't even know if they make yellow dry erase markers. I don't have one. Stop saying yes. Anyway, you get the point. So what do the people do? They do what is necessary to be able to connect. And the way you do, which, and how we do it, is faith. We live by faith. We believe God. Now, not just on money, but our whole our life, our testimony, the way we walk, the way we live, we live by faith. We speak words of faith. We talk words of faith. We are light where we, you know, we carry that message wherever we go. We help people. We share with people truth and life. Amen? And we believe God. And then God will call the people to supply, to, be, to, to each part to supply. Now, there's inside of here, there are wires. It could be stranded or solid copper. Probably an extension cord is stranded wire. They don't, they don't make many cords that are solid copper because it doesn't work. You know, wiring inside the wall, yes, but cords stuff are stranded wire. And that's lots of them spun together and twisted together and then separated with insulation because you've got hot, you've got negative, you've got you know, your, your hot line, you've got your neutral line, you've got your negative line. Uh, you have all of those, so they're all separated by insulation, okay? When you, but when you take that wire, every part's working together, and you plug it in, now you've taken the, the, the power, what God has supply of, and you've brought it to what you're trying to, to work with. When we live by faith and supply, bring our supply to the church, we empower the church, the corporate body. Your individual faith, and your individual believing, and your individual believing for finances, and believing for your gifts to be manifest, and believing for what God's called you to do to be used for the kingdom of God. All of that comes to the table. And, you know, I mean, you know, it's, it's you know, it's a, not, it's a, it was a lopsided pie, okay? I get it. I'm sorry, I, uh, I'm not symmetrical. <coughs> but I'm telling you, Every one of these pieces it takes to make the whole. If we take out this section, we got a lot, but we don't have the whole. If we take this line,
second. Wait a second. Put some electrical tape on it and put it back together. <laughs> okay. We tape this line. And like I said, usually they're stranded wire. And you kind of twist it back. You know, somebody, kids get a hold of it. The dog gets under, twist it back and forth. And you start breaking them. And you get down where you got maybe a, a fourth or a third or, or, or a tenth, maybe a tenth of what you had in that line that's connected still. What's going to happen over here? It's, it's one, one thing is it's going to get hot, okay, because it's too much. It's, it's trying to push all that through. It's not going through. But it's going to brown out. This is not going to get what it needs, okay? So well, it may still have some flowing to it or through it, but it's, not, it's no longer effective. And eventually it'll burn it in two. It'll break it in two. And it could cause a fire. Okay? So when we, when we don't have every part supplying, we don't have the whole. And we might have some stuff going on, you know. I know some folks are happy with half a pie instead of a no pie at all. I mean, you know. Uh, but in reality, and when we're talking about the church, and we're talking about the kingdom of God, we're talking about living by faith, that, that piece missing can be vital. It can be vital to the, 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 um, the church doing what God called it to do. Which is, you know, which is why uh, Satan fights so hard against people when they're in a place to, for them to stay there. Because many times they are a missing, they're a piece, if their piece is taken out, now this isn't bondage, you're not under captivity, if you leave and go somewhere else, you're going to die and go to hell. But you might be the piece that's necessary to make this whole work like it should. Okay? And a lot of people are. A lot of people have made those decisions in the past that really weren't supposed to. In, in, in all kinds of churches, not just ours, in churches everywhere. That's happened. Because they were called to be that piece. But because they didn't see this, Satan lied to them and told them either their piece wasn't important here or it was better served somewhere else. Well, what happens when you get, I'm, just going, I'm not going to draw all the little things, but what happens when you get a hole over here and you take a piece over here and add it to it? One, it doesn't fit in. Or you're going to have to cut something out to make it fit. Okay? You've got too much. Now, too much is bad for that like not enough is. You plug this in and, and, and you, you somebody wire it wrong, hook up 220. Well, let me tell you. Went overseas. Went on a mission trip. Had this little Kodak inkjet printer. Portable printer. I mean, it was, it was the coolest little printer. Carried my notebook computer with me. Had that little printer. I could just get where I was. got somewhere, and didn't think about the fact, well, actually what I did, I had carried my converters and stuff, but wasn't thinking, popped on the, the plug converter, because, you know, European plugs are different. They're, they're different. And then, but but I, I also had, it, that was supposed to go in between, was the converter from 220 to 110. I just put the plug adapter itself right on the end of my plug. Plugged it in the wall, and my printer went, the light came on and went off in the story. It cooked my little AC adapter because I just sent 220 through it, a 110 thing. They, they had to run out to a store somewhere and grab me a 220 adapter right then. I mean, and they did, you know. I mean, I mean not, not a 220 adapter that converts. They just went and got something that had the right connection that converted to 6 volt that was 220. I just plugged it right straight in. You know, I didn't have to mess with the adapters anymore. But, you know, their plugs are different. They got different plugs all over Europe and the world from ours. You don't see this much overseas unless it's a adapted for American travelers for 110. They got, they got two little, they, got, they don't have like flat things. They'll have the round ones. They'll have, they'll have something that looks like a, a, a um, Wash a, a, a dryer plug, you know, the slanted and stuff, you know, and you use that. It just depends on what country you're in and what they're using. But, you know, Europe primarily uses a little single hole things. You stick them in. And, um, and they, they're terrible because they, 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 they don't hold tight. Anyway, love the Europeans, hated their adapters. 
Okay? So, um, living by faith. So your part of living by faith, it's not, it, living by faith is not just so you can get healed and get blessed. And that's where, that's where we've come up short in 30, 40 years of teaching on faith in the Word of Faith charismatic circles is we always want to point to what's in it for me, how am I going to get blessed, how am I going to get rich, how am I going to get healed, bless, bless, bless. It's, Lord, it's all about me. Lord, bless me, my wife, our two kids, us four, and no more. Lord, my name is Jimmy, and I take all you give me. You know, we, and, and I understand that God wants to bless you. But if you start teaching people a lot of times, we can tell our maturity level, that God wants you to use your faith to win souls, you'll get people, yeah, that's right. But have a seminar on how to have supernatural debt cancellation and have a, you know, all your bills paid off next month by giving to the preacher. Which one's going to fill up first? There ain't no question. Matter of fact, one may not even come close to filling up. The other, you have them standing outside, lined up, trying to get in, buying the tapes, even though they weren't in the service. Okay? We have to have a focus shift from simply being that faith is so that we are blessed. It's not that we do away with it. We don't throw the baby out in the bathwater. We don't swing back to the other ditch. Okay? But we do modify and mature in our approach and our thinking about living by faith. Because God wants you to live by faith. God told Abraham to get out of his country, out of his kingdom, go into a place he would show him. and said he would bless him, make him exceedingly fruitful as the sand of the seashores, bless them that bless them and curse them that curse thee. But he was walking in obedience to God to begin a, um, a heritage of a nation to bring Christ. It wasn't just about Abraham getting rich. God was going to make him rich, but the faith walk there was not about Abraham being rich. That wasn't the end of his faith. The end of his faith was what? If ye be Christ, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. It was about producing the seed to save humanity. Now, one of the byproducts along the way was he made him rich. And you see, we can get into faith and receive and get rich. But don't make that the end. Don't make prosperity for you getting a new car. And that's all good. So if you need, listen, God doesn't care if you believe God, if you believe Him for a new car so you can have a nice car to drive. Uh, and, you know, you're not riding up down the road with, with a, a mechanics tool set in the back because you're going to break down four times before you get to the grocery store. I get it. Okay? But don't make that the end of why you go to church and you're, you're reading the faith books and you're, you're talking the faith talk because you're going to believe in God you're going to be rich. Because the end of your faith is to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. To take the message of the Word of God and reach nations with truth. Okay? To grow the church so it is effective in reaching hurting people. Most of us could say right now, if I don't get another blessing from God the rest of my life here on earth, I'm not saying do that. I have been blessed so much already. Now, I'm not saying that's what we're supposed to do. Not, that, that, that's going to the other ditch. I'm just saying if we did say that, we, we would be right. We've been blessed so much already. Okay? So, does that mean we don't believe? No. That just means now let's mature. And make sure we're taking all those principles and all that stuff we've learned and all the confession we've learned. And now let's move that up to another place where we're growing the church. We're reaching people who've never been blessed or don't have, have, can't see any blessings in their life that are hurting, that are sick, that are impoverished, that are, that are just at the edge of death's door, that are edge of despair. I mean, or as they said in Anne of Avila, she was in the depth of despair. And uh, Marilla told her, don't say that because to say you're in despair is to turn your back on God. And, you know, <laughs> uh, and when you got girls and you grow up watching all that stuff, I mean, Pride and Prejudice, Anne of Avonlea, Anne of Green Gables, and the continuing story with an E. Okay? I watch them all. I watch marathons of them with them. You know, because I'm a good daddy. All right? And you read the Animal Daddy and Daddy book to your kids. Beaver Daddy's a building daddy. Daddy, my daddy's a building daddy too, but he uses many tools and glue. You know, okay. 
So you'll remember part of that book. <clears throat> All right? Sang to them at night, and they would go to sleep, I think, in self-defense. Anyway. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. So, and I did not share our, show, our program tonight. Well, praise the Lord. Whoever did. Okay, you take. Well, that's even better. Thank you, Jesse. Because I sure didn't do it. And um, this was good so far. Anyway, except I say hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Anyway, so when we live by faith, the justice will live by faith. So that, when we say we're living by faith, that's every arena of life. Not just when it comes to your money or not just when it comes to your body. Your relationship to your church, your relationship with God how you conduct yourself in arenas of life. You're to live by faith. You're to walk by faith and not by sight. Because you're just, you're righteous. You've been decreed righteous. You've been made righteous. So yes, how you now live. Amen? And so as, you're, as you are meditating on the Word, as you're speaking the Word, you know, now let's take it beyond, well, I mean, we got a nice car, got a nice house, got, you know, all our bills are paid. We're not, we're not, we're just, this is all hunk the door. I don't need to use my faith on anything. You're part of the pie. And we need the whole to get the job done. Then you believe God to give you more time for the work. To be able to, a witty inventions. Amen? Great ideas. I, I, you know, people just don't think about this a lot of times, but God will show you how to do things you don't know how to do because it helps the work of God. That's what he did in the Old Testament. He gave them witty inventions. They didn't know how to do all the stuff that they, he wanted them to do to build, the, to build the tabernacle. He supernaturally taught them. I like using this one because it's, you know, it's, it was, it's so ingrained in my memory from the past. When we first moved to Greensboro, um, I had, uh, at, at the church I was in, they were using, some, somebody that was there was a pro programming company, software company, and they wrote software, and they wrote it in DBase, um, DBase 2. All right, they were using DBase 2. We moved here, um, and I had to learn, I knew how to program, because I was, you know, I'm, I was a computer programmer by trade, although I only worked a few months, actually, in the workforce, I still knew how to do it. I took on the school for it. Then went to Raymond, and, you know, but didn't think I'd ever use it again. Honestly, I just, well, where am I going to use this? I'm not going to the ministry. I'm going to, I'm going to preach, you know. And, um, but um, I had to learn, and how I learned it was I took the DBase 2 manual home, took the guy's, printed the guy's programs out, and went through his programs and saw what, how he, what he was doing. Sloppy program. This guy was a sloppy programmer. It drove me up a wall. I hate sloppy programming. I don't know about you, Dick, you, are neat, you, I, you had to have been a neat programmer. Yeah, you had to have been. I know Dick, Dick would have been, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Had to be right. <clears throat> and, um, but I, I learned the, co the commands to do what I knew my head needed to be done. Okay? I knew how, you know, I found out how you open files. I found out how you relate the files to each other, you know, multiple files. I found out how you manipulated the information in that file. I found out how you could either print it or restore it back into the, to the uh, digital database. Whatever I, I, you know, I found out how to do that. Well, I came to Greensboro, and bought we we just bought because by then DBase three plus was out, so I bought DBase three plus and started programming. And I was writing the church's system. Let me say something: the 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 internals of that system are still what we use today. Of course, it was good. Anyway, <laughs> I'm you know, and, and, and if you're a programmer, you don't know talk about you that you know you have do loops or do cases and. You know, if statements, if if this, then, you know, if this, then, then you do this, if not, you know. Uh, but do case was, you could say do this, and then you could have bunch of what they call cases or options. Those cases were options. You could just go down and list all the options and then have in case. That was a great feature because you didn't have to do nested do's and didn't have to do nested ifs. You could just do what do case, put all your different options inside of that, put in case. Okay? Well, I came across them because my print program, I had to have set, I was trying to, you know, I was having to print stuff in certain positions on the thing. And I'm like, well, I don't want to have to, you know, ask every time I do this, um, you know, write out a whole series. If it's this, then do this. And do it redundantly because I had to change the position it printed in. Well, one thing, the Lord showed me how to use variables. So I used variables for and stuffed them in there and then used the literal 
value of that to say, if it's an 01, well, I had stuffed that in there off of, off of where data had come in. Okay? Then print to print position something 01. Well, I set up variables that said P01. That was a print position. And just put the numbers in. And so it would stuff that 01 in wherever I needed it. And it didn't have to do about, you know, it was like um, about five lines of code for that versus somewhere in the neighborhood of 70 or 80 to do the same thing. And it made it quicker because those little variables were sitting up in memory. And whenever it, it came by and it counted, it was like, boom. Okay? He showed me how to. I'm, so I'm laying in bed thinking, how can I do this? Then I got an 8088. And if you all know, that's the second generation PC. 8086 was the first, I think. Was that right? 8086? So I got an 8088 running at about 3.77 megahertz. Dinosaur. Slower. Made the seven-year itch look like Speedy Gonzalez. Okay? And so I'm thinking, man, every day, if it's got to go through all this whole nested if stuff to figure out what it's going to do, it would t you know, it's going to take forever. And I'm just laying in bed thinking about it. And it's like I, in my head, I saw it written out. Well, I didn't think this stuff up. God did it. God just put it right there. I got up, ran into the other room, and wrote the code out. Went. And then I put it in and went, wow. That is cool, Lord. Thank you. Made it so much more streamlined. Yeah. And I'll tell you the difference between the 8088 and what we have now. I don't think we can measure them. Because I had, when I had errors, I would, I would just put an error message up and make it go through a loop ten times. So, so it would stay on the screen so you could read it. Well, in the 8088, you would sit there and go through it ten times. You'd be sitting there going, okay, I got it already. When the 286s came out, it went, flip. I had to move it up to 100 for it to stay on the screen long enough to read it. Then when the 386 came out, I had to move it up to 1,000. By the time I got past that, I figured out another way to do it. <laughs> I was actually we were over in Visual DBase, and I could put a drop, I could put a box in and, and turn it on and off, and click it on and off. But at that point, I was just running DOS-based programming. But the thing is, God showed me how to do something that helped the church. Now, see, well, that's just natural stuff. It's still important to the church. I said it's still important to the church. It saves the church money. It saves the church time. It saves us effort. Anything that can make it streamlined like that, God's interested in helping. And my God can give you witty ideas and inventions to help the church, to help grow the church, to help the church be better. Amen? And he can give you witty inventions that make you money so you can bless the church. So when you start putting your faith out there for God to use you, here. Amen? Keep this up. We've got to get a new, new line put in. That's my duct tape. All right. You are living by faith. Abraham was living by faith. Because the end of his faith was, so shall thy seed be. And we get the full revelation of that in Galatians, that if we're Christ, then we Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise that God made to him. His, his faith was not about being so great that him and, Lot, him and um, Lot couldn't stand in the same land. It was about Christ. It was about reaching the world. That was the end of his faith. The end of his faith was not how much money and how much wealth he had. And he was exceedingly rich in silver and cattle and gold. But the end of his faith was Christ. And the end of our faith has to be how God, how Christ uses the church to reach people for him. And your equation is in here. You fit in here. Because you're a joint that supplies. You're a strand of wire in that cape, in that line. And other someone else says, you know, two fold cords, not, three fold cords, not easily broken. You know, you're, we're all twisted together to create enough flow to get the work done. 
Amen? You fit in there. You have a part. You are called. I'm trying not to touch it and break the line again. Get ready to go to Intrax and get a new cable and hook up here. All right? God's going to use you. And it's going to be you using your faith to be positioned to be used. Amen. And see your finances increase and see your opportunities increase. And to see you become another man or woman in arenas of life and arenas of, of walking with God that you never thought you could walk in. You could be the quietest person in the church and could have been for 30 years and become the, the I mean, a hand laying on devil, casting out, uh, Holy Ghost praying individual. Because you started using your faith. For, remember what did Paul say? What did Paul say? And we pray. You know, he said, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Ask for me that I may open my mouth with boldness. And that I may open my He wanted to preach with boldness. You can pray for God to give you boldness. Even though that's not you. Now, I'm going to share something with you. Um, and we're going to quit here. I know it's a little bit early, but I can't push beyond where we are because this is what we needed to say. Okay? So, so I'm not going to add something to it and miss the point of what the Spirit of God is trying to say. He's talking to our church. This is, this is God talking to our church, church, not just on faith. He's talking to us about our church. Amen? Lester Summerall said he was not as bold and, and you know, brazenly bold as people saw him in the end until Wigglesworth laid hands on him. He said, Wigglesworth laid hands on him and prayed that the boldness that was on him would come on Brother Summerall. Before that, he was, he was kind of tepid. Uh, tepid. He, was, he wasn't brash and bold. I mean, now, he, yeah, he, I mean, I, you hear his ministry, how he started this ministry when he was down in South America, and he went there and told the guy he had to preach that night or he would die because God showed him a vision of the Bible in a coffin. And that drove him for a long time. He was preaching because he, he didn't want to go in the coffin. But he wasn't. We, we got kind of referred to Brother Summerall in the end as a bull in a china shop. I mean, he was just, he's going in. He came to your church and said, and he did flat out tell you, I want your money. I'm doing this, this, this for the kingdom of God. I want your money. He's he like, here? <laughs> How much do you need, Brother Summerall? I mean, you know, I mean, just bold. Brother, Brother Willisworth laid hands on him. He became a different man. We can believe God to become different men and women by faith, yeah. to be what we, everything that God wants us to be. And I know your heart, some of you, you know, well, all of you should have this, but I, I know y'all, I know you. You want to be what God wants you to be. But for whatever reason, you're, 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 you're tepid, you're afraid, you don't think you measure up, you don't think you're qualified, start using your faith to be what God called you to be. That God will give you the boldness and the um, audacity to step out and do what he wants you to be, even though you don't think you qualify. Carrie, you could be the person who funds trips to Africa. And you're thinking, how? Put your faith out there. Start asking God to use you to do things for God. You're asking him to bring finances through your hand. It's never too late to start. When you think about, you know, brother, I forgot how Wigglesworth was when he started his ministry, but he wasn't a young man. Well, maybe he's in his 50s, 40s or 50s when he started his ministry. Was in the 60s when he started? Okay. I mean, he's an older man when he started his ministry. Because some kid jumped up on him and he, and, and he had appendicitis and, and laid hands in his, in his side and he got healed. And he was crazy wild for Jesus. You can be crazy wild for Jesus. Amen. That's not my nature. Now, he can change your nature. He can change you. You may think I can never prosper, but God can change that. And he can change it by you using your faith. Give him the tools that he's given you. Use the tools he's given you to tap into him to get it to work for you. Become another man or another woman. 
Become the funder of the gospel. Become the supplier in the church. Amen. Be the one in your, in your heart. Now, you're not going to be the only one, but be the one that's filling, this, filling the chart, filling it in, and not leaving it empty. Are you here? All right? But not leaving it empty, but filling it in, and we're getting it whole. Okay? Don't be the one that's getting cut out and taken over somewhere else that got too much already. That they're all sitting around trying to figure out how we can get, you know, how can we use them? We've got too many people doing that already. All right? Well, just, just, just load up your baker truck and send it over here. All right? We'll finish our pie out and get busy. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Are y'all here? You go home. All right, praise the Lord. Father, we thank you for this word. We thank you that people are blessed. Thank you that you cause them to understand that when they live by faith, it, it has an end result of furnishing the kingdom of God with that which is necessary to fulfill our purpose and calling in Jesus' name. And everybody agree with that by saying, all right, can I get a Medea amen? A to the men, that's right, all right. We sure love y'all. Remember this, that this is our victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And if you want to give, that's already going out there on the screen. So you look at that. Praise God. Uh, go back and watch it at the end again if we get off the air before you get a chance to read it off. PayPal or Square Cash have opportunities to give to the kingdom of God here at Faith and Victory Church. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you again next time in Jesus' name. Be blessed. <laughs>